Hello and welcome. I recently tested the S9, the J9, and the Combo J9 in an extended carpet test with three different carpets and certified test dust. I found the J9 series is not even close to the S9 series regarding carpet cleaning, with the Combo J9 being the worst. Let's have a closer look at the results and see what I think is going on. As we can see the J9 results are nowhere near to the ones of the S9. Depending on which carpet was tested the gap is up to 34% points. The thick pile carpet and the short pile carpet need both good airflow and a good brush design for pile separation while the fluffy pile carpet cleaning is more airflow related. The used test dust is slightly embedded and is the same that is mandatory for testing following the testing standard IEC 62285 Chapter 7, the one iRobot is referring to with their new cleaning power rating. I tested the Combo J9 Plus off camera and the results were even a bit worse compared to the standard J9, so let's take a look at the airflow design of the robots to investigate what I think is the issue. The airflow design of the ESI I and J series is different compared to all other series. All other series have a somewhat straightforward airflow design by the means that the air is sucked in at the floor and the exhaust is placed somewhere in the back of the robot to blow the air out, the 900 and the S series are exhausting to the top, what is pretty much ideal to prevent debris blowing. But with the change design the exhaust is placed along the actual cleaning head, so the air is exhausted to the floor itself. I did some airflow testing with a hot wire anemometer and a standard vein anemometer and according to my measurements the S9 is more powerful regarding airflow, I have not done any suction tests yet. But that is only one part of the story since there is more to look for regarding airflow measurements since the distribution of the airflow is not equal over the whole cleaning head area and the inlet of the cleaning heads is placed and designed a bit differently. So I am not relying only on these measurements because there is something more about the exhaust design. Let's have a look at an I3. The airflow of the robots gets lowered if the exhaust is blocked or at least somehow constrained. A part of the exhaust is taped, watch the anemometer, as soon as the tape is removed the airflow goes back to standard values. The same effect can be seen with the J series in general, but the J9 series are a bit different. In general the J9 has the same problem, as soon as we tape a part of the exhaust the airflow gets reduced, but the J9 can overcome this to some extent. I think it can create more suction pressure to brute force the airflow through other gaps. You can see how it maintains the airflow even with more exhaust area taped and even some changes. The robot starts to exhaust air through the gaps along the wheel models and later on even starts to bypassing the filter by forcing air through the filter placement chassis. Of course this is an extreme example of a restricted airflow way but it looks like this airflow design with pointing the exhaust to the ground is not optimal for higher suction motors since the exhaust can be blocked by carpet pile. I think this is the main issue of the J9 and why they do not perform very well on carpets, especially compared to the S9, and even the older 980 model is not performing worse as some quick testing on the thick pile carpet showed. That is all about this topic, maybe I will do a follow-up about the mentioned IEC norm, iRobots marketing and nerfing the S9 on paper.